Welcome to Edupedia World. In this video, we will discuss different time series graphs. We have seen in the previous video that graphic presentation of data is a technique to present numerical facts on a graph paper. When numerical data related to economy correspond to time period, the data becomes time series data. This data needs to be plotted against time intervals on a graph paper. Let us understand this in detail. When a set of statistical data are presented on a graph paper, it is called a graph. Presenting the data on a graph paper, we get different points, each point corresponding to a value of a statistical series. By joining the points, we get a line which shows how a variable tends to change. Each point on the line corresponds to an arithmetic value of the variable under study like for example the value of exports or imports etc. When the values of numerical data correspond to time series data, graphic presentation of these data will be time series graphs or arithmetic line graph. It is a graphic presentation of time series data on a graph paper. In these graphs, time that is hour, day, date, week, month, year, etc. is plotted along x-axis and the value of the variable is plotted against y-axis. A line graph obtained by joining these plotted points is called arithmetic line graph or time series graph. These graphs help in understanding the trend, periodicity, etc. in a long term time series data. Time series graph is also known as historiogram or line graph. Rules for constructing a graph. The following points must be kept in mind while constructing a graph. First, heading. Every graph must have a suitable and precise heading. Heading must be self-explanatory about the nature of information in the graph. Second, choice of scale. One should fix an appropriate scale of graphs for the presentation of data. An appropriate scale is the one with reference to someone by which the entire data are easily represented by the scale. The graph should be on the middle of the graph depending on the values of paper to make it attractive and present the volume of data. Third, proportion of axis. As far as possible, length of x axis on the graph paper should be one and a half times the length of y axis. Fourth, Method of plotting the points. Economics and business statistics are generally positive. These are to be presented in the first quadrant. Accordingly, the point of origin is fixed is the left and lower portion of the graph paper. On the x-axis, the points are plotted from left to right and on y-axis, the points are plotted upward from bottom to top. Fifth, lines of different types. If more than one line or curve are to be drawn in the same graph, these lines should be differentiated from each other in the form of broken lines, dotted lines, bold lines, etc. Sixth, table of data. It would be useful to give the table of data along with the graph of the data. This helps verification of the graph. Seventh, use of false line. If the values in a series are very large and the difference between the smallest value and zero is high and if these values are to be indicated on y axis of the graph then the o y axis started somewhere above the point o and the last point to draw a line or curve we mark different graph paper corresponding to different points these points are joined to make a line or a curve line must be uniform throughout its length of different thickness at its different points. These are the rules for constructing a graph. One variable graphs. These graphs represent values of only one variable on a graph paper with respect to some time period. Time is taken along the x axis and the values of the variable are taken along the y axis. The values of the variable are plotted against the corresponding time periods. The plotted points are joined by straight lines. The graph so drawn shows a trend representing variations in the variable through the fluctuation of the line or curve. 
Let us understand this with the following illustration. We have a table showing production of factory between January and June. We have to present these information in the form of one variable time series graph. With the given information, we will make one variable graph. First, we will write the heading that is production of factory from the month January to June. And for this particular graph, we have taken scale 1 cm equals to 2 quintals on y axis. First, we will indicate time period in terms of month on the x axis that is January, February, March, April and so on. And production on y axis that is 2 quintals, 4 quintals, 6 quintals etc. Second, we will mark different points on the graph indicating values of production corresponding to different months. That is in January it's 5 quintals, in February it's 7.5 quintals and in March it's 5 quintals and so on. And after that we will join the points to get a graph showing the behavior production over time. This is how we will make a one variable graph. Two variable graphs. These graphs represent values of two variables on a graph paper with respect to some time period. Time is taken along the x-axis and the values of variable are taken along the y-axis. The values of both the variables are plotted against the corresponding time periods. The plotted points of both the variables are joined by straight lines. The graph so drawn shows a trend representing variations in the variables through the fluctuation of the lines or curves. Let us understand this with the help of a following illustration. With the data given of production and sales of a factory between January and June, we will make a two variable graph. With the given information now, we will make a two variable graph. First, we'll start with the heading that is production and sales of a factory between January and June. And for this particular graph, we have taken scale 1 cm equals to 5 quintals for production and 5000 rupees for sales on y-axis. First, we will indicate time period in terms of month on the x-axis that is January, February, March and so on. And production and sales on y-axis that is 5 quintals for production and 5000 rupees for sales and so on. After that, we will mark different points on the graph paper indicating values of productions and sale corresponding to different months. That is 5 quintals of production in January and 7.5 thousand rupees in January for sales. This is how we will plot the data on the graph. We will do this with the help of two different graph lines in the graph. That is, we can use the colors also. That is, in this particular diagram, we have taken red color for sales and blue color for production. We will join the points to get a graph showing the behavior of production and sales over time. This is how we will make two variable graphs. More than two variable graphs. These graphs represent values of more than two variables on a graph paper with respect to some time period. Time is taken along the x-axis and the values of variable are taken along the y-axis. The values of both the variables are plotted against the corresponding time periods. The plotted points of both the variables are joined by the straight lines. The graph so drawn shown a trend representing variations in the variables through the fluctuation of the line. Let us understand this with the help of a following illustration. Uh, we have to represent the estimated sectoral real growth rates as multiple time series graph. Given data will be presented in the form of more than two variable graphs. Let's start with the heading that is estimated sectoral real growth rates. And for this particular graph, we have taken scale 1 cm equals to 2% growth rate. This data will also be presented in the form of graph in the same manner as we have done in two variable graphs. First, we will indicate time period on the x-axis and growth rates on y-axis. We will mark different points on the graph indicating the values of growth rates corresponding to different months. 
according to the data provided to us. We have three things with us that is agriculture, industry and services as we can see in the graph. Blue is for agriculture, red is for industry and orange is for services. This is how we have differentiated between the three datas. After that, we will join the points to get a graph showing the behavior of growth rates over time. This is how we will make the more than two variable graphs. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos.